Greetings everybody, today we are going to talk about oil palm. Oh boy, this is quite possibly the most controversial fruit in the entire world. It is estimated that every person on the planet eats an average of 17 pounds of oil palm each year, often without even realizing it. The reason for that, unsurprisingly, is that oil palm is used to make palm oil. I know, shocking. This is not something that you are likely going to find at a supermarket. It's not like you're gonna find a bottle of palm oil next to the olive oil. However, if you go into your pantry and start looking at ingredients, you're gonna probably see palm oil listed a lot. Palm oil has become a dirty word for a lot of people, and there is a really good reason for that. However, I want to do something different than other people have done, okay? I don't want to just trash talk palm oil. I want to look at it the same way I would look at any fruit on this channel. So I'm going to talk about what's bad about it, but I'm also going to talk about what's good about it. Surprisingly, there are good things about it. And I'm going to cook with it. But before we do all of that, I think it's important that we look at the fruit itself. This here is oil palm. Very uh, <laughs> controversial figure in the plant world, but you know, in some countries it isn't. Some people use it just kind of like naturally. Let's see if I can get one of these without stabbing myself. There we go. <sighs> I'm curious what this tastes like, just eating out of hand. It's edible. You know, right? Yeah. It's in everything, should be. It looks really cool too. Like palm oil is like got this starburst kind of kind of look to it. It's actually okay. It's like somewhere between egg fruit, avocado, maybe a little bit of a stick thrown in there for good measure. It's, you're giving it a lot of praise there. <laughs> I, like I'm saying, it's not great. You know, it's not, I wouldn't eat this for pleasure. It reminds me of a fibrous avocado. Yeah. Really oily. Oh, it's really oily. It's got a little, I mean, it's palm oil. oil. Yeah. <laughs> it's palm oil. But it's got uh, a little bit of like a, do you get that like little egg fruit kind of jive to it? Yeah. Not sweet. Not sweet. Not tart. Starchy. Starchy, yeah. Very starchy. I mean, Quite I would, rainy. I think maybe if you were to cook that, it would be a little bit better just yeah. on its own. But surprisingly not awful. Yeah, that's way better than I expected. Even eating it as like a regular fruit might be useful in, you know, times of times of need, a little bit more fat in your diet or something. If you ignore the you know the problems and the controversy, then objectively, it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I, I never thought I'd say that about palm oil. <laughs> Palm oil production is linked to deforestation, loss of biodiversity of plants and animals, illegal farming in protected forests, uncontrolled forest fires, pollution, loss of habitat of endangered animals, displacement of indigenous communities, forced labor, child labor, human trafficking, increase in greenhouse gases, and many other horrible, terrible things. It is for those reasons that I personally do not buy products that contain palm oil in them. At least I try not to. It's kind of difficult sometimes not to get a product that has palm oil in it. It's hard to imagine that there's anything good to say about oil palm when the problems around it are just so great. But there are! Okay, hear me out on this. The 
The problem with palm oil is mostly the production. It's the processing. It's the people. It's the companies. It's not the plant. Don't blame oil palm for the problems of palm oil, okay? The fruit itself is actually pretty good. Oil palm is nine times more productive than soybean oil and five times as productive as canola oil. It contains no trans fats and although it does have saturated fat, it has 40% less saturated fat than coconut oil. Both the fruit and the seed can be used to extract oil and that is why sometimes you may see palm kernel oil listed in the ingredients rather than just palm oil. After the oil is extracted, the byproducts can be used for a lot of different things. It can be used to make animal feed, biofuel, uh, paper. There's even a company that is making biodegradable plastic out of palm oil waste. One of the reasons why palm oil is the way it is, is to meet a demand that humans have for vegetable oil that has gone completely out of hand. In the 1960s, the global production of all major vegetable oils was about 17 million tons. In 2018, the global production of major vegetable oils was 218 million tons. Gross. Because of how productive oil palm is, remember it's nine times more productive than soybeans, palm oil might actually be better than the alternatives. I mean, at least it would be if it was done in a responsible way, which it isn't. But the question is, could it be? The good news is that there is sustainably produced palm oil. And if you look at a lot of packages, you may see in the ingredients sustainably produced palm oil. Or you may find this symbol on it, which means that it's been sustainably produced. Also, a lot of the major palm oil production companies claim to be environmentally friendly. The bad news, and yeah, there is more bad news, is that uh, you have to trust that they're reporting things honestly, which I, I don't. There's still a lot, of, a lot of problems with palm oil, clearly. And hopefully one day, all those problems, all this controversy will be a thing of the past and that there will be palm oil that you can feel comfortable using. For now though, I will continue to read ingredients and not buy things that say palm oil on it. With one exception. Eighty four percent of palm oil production is done in just two countries, Malaysia and Indonesia, and it was only introduced to this part of the world in the 19th century. Oil palm is originally from Western Africa and it's been cultivated there for centuries. They make their own palm oil in Western Africa, but it looks a bit different. This is red palm oil and red palm oil unlike regular palm oil is using only the flesh of the fruit not the kernel of the fruit it honestly shocked me when i went to a west african supermarket and bought this because there was an entire aisle dedicated to just red palm oil it is definitely an essential part of the cuisine there. The Southeast Asian palm oil is being produced to meet a global demand for vegetable oil. This is being produced on a much smaller scale in order to meet the demand for a cooking ingredient in West African cuisine. They're nothing like each other. This is not just any cooking oil. This provides a very interesting flavor to West African dishes. And uh, I'll try some. That flavor, uh, let me pour myself a little, little shot. Ooh, it's very thick. <laughs> that is a taste. That, that is a strong taste. 
taking a shot of this, I would not recommend. <laughs> but it's not a bad taste. It's just like you clearly are meant to cook with it. Vegetal, a little earthy. It's got maybe a touch of like a tomato sort of flavor, like if you deep fried a tomato. It also tastes a bit like avocado, but with the seeds. Like avocado seeds are like a piney potato kind of taste. It's got a little bit of that in there. Interesting. It's interesting. I mean, don't don't drink palm oil. You're not meant to drink palm oil. You're meant to cook with it. But uh, yeah, that, that definitely has a strong taste. And I think that flavor will be really interesting to cook with, which I will do later. One interesting thing about this stuff is that although palm oil has become a dirty word for a lot of people, red palm oil is kind of the opposite. There are a lot of um, health supplement and holistic medicine kind of companies that will sell red palm oil as a superfood and you can even buy this in capsule form for way too much money. I don't have a super high opinion of um, companies like that however if you want this for those reasons uh, this is like a couple bucks at a West African market. Another thing that I bought at this market was this. This is called red palm cream and what this is is just the pulp of the fruit they take the oil palm they cook it they uh, separate out the seeds and the fibers the liquid left over is this so this is basically just the pulp of the fruit minus seeds and fiber if you take this pulp and you cook it until the oil separates and you separate off that oil that's basically this here so uh, we got two different products, one made from the pulp, one made from the oil, and uh, I'm gonna cook with both of them. So first, let's use this. I wanna try using just the pulp itself. So what I did with the red palm cream is I made a traditional soup that people eat in Ghana. Uh, at least to the best of my abilities. Uh, and how this is typically done is you take ginger, onion, tomato, you cook that with broth. I also put some spices in there. I put some saleem pepper in it and also some black cardamom to add a little bit of smokiness to it. I also added a few peppers that were sent to me by Matt over at mattspeppers.com. Thank you, Matt. Once everything was nice and soft, I blended it up with an immersion blender. I added some textured vegetable protein, which is going to be my first of three different types of protein that I'm gonna put in this. I took two thirds of a cup of the red palm cream, added one cup of hot water to that and mixed it together. That got thrown into the soup. At this point, I reduced the heat to medium and let it cook down for about 45 minutes. After that, I added some more protein to it, uh, in this case tofu and little bean curd knots because I had them in my freezer. I know, this is not traditional. Normally, you put meat in this. Uh, vegan versions of this usually use uh, mushrooms. I do not like mushrooms. So uh, this is my own creation. That is wrong, I know. And I serve this soup with something that is often served with the soup, and that is fufu. This is a cocoa yam fufu, or taro fufu. And uh, I've never made this before, and I did a pretty bad job of it, but in the end, I think it's edible. So let's see how it is. I know this isn't the most authentic of dishes right here, however, it does look pretty good. Okay, so I've got a spoon with all sorts of things in it. We've got the foo-foo, we've got some of the uh, textured vegetable protein, and a lot of the broth <laughs> stew itself. Okay, let's give it a shot. It, it's good. It's really good. Um, I was worried that this was going to be super oily, but it, it's not, it's not. Because this is using the pulp of the oil palm, not the oil of the oil palm, it's not super greasy. 
And the recipe that I followed actually said if you don't want too much oil in it, you can let it boil for a bit and then skim the oil off the top. I didn't do that, but uh, I can see why you would want to. It definitely does have a lot of oil in it, but uh, not that much. Not that much, and you could reduce that if you wanted to. I like the fufu in there. The soft texture of that is, uh, is nice, and adds like a little bit of stodge to it. I know it's a little weird to have so many things that I got from a Chinese grocery store in here, but what I was going for were different types of texture, and those little knots do have a very interesting texture to it. The flavor that I'm getting from this is definitely the red palm cream. Uh, although I put other things in it, it's got tomatoes and peppers and ginger and all that in there, it, I'm getting that too. This is called red palm stew for a reason. Like that is in the foreground. That is the main taste that I'm getting. And um, it is a hard taste to describe. I've actually had something that tastes exactly like this, but it is a very, very rare thing. So it's not going to really help to make this comparison, uh, but I would like to at least point it out. It tastes a lot like red pandanus. Red pandanus is a really interesting fruit, really interesting, really oily and uh, tastes almost exactly like oil palm. A more relatable thing is it's kind of like tomatoes, but different. I know I put tomatoes in this, that this is a different flavor than just straight up tomatoes, but it's like in that world. It's like how tomatoes are savory, and that sort of savory flavor, it goes deep, you know? There's, there's depth to this. There's like a richness to it. Like if you made like a stew with like a whole bunch of stuff in it, vegetables and all sorts of things, and you cooked it for like a week and got like this like thick broth at the end, got some of that. This is the sort of thing that I would keep on hand to add to a curry or add to a stew, add to maybe like a chili, something that you got a lot of flavors going on. It would bring them together. And I think I would maybe go a little bit lighter with it because, I mean, the main flavor that I'm getting here is that palm cream, and if you wanted to have it more of like a complementary flavor, I would say just throw a tablespoon in with your stew or your curry or whatever, and it would add like this little like bottom layer to it that would be really good. Now it is time to try the oil. Uh, so what I want to do with this is just something kind of simple. I'm going to make some uh, potato pancakes. Why? Because I'm going to be making that for dinner anyway. So I'm going to make some with regular oil, just vegetable oil, and then I'm going to also make some with this and see how that compares. What does this add to something that is like fairly mild, like a potato? And there you have it. We've got one with the vegetable oil and one with the red palm oil. One thing that I've noticed already is that the smell of this one is different. It smells a little bit um, fruity. There's something kind of fruity smelling about it, like a sweet smell. That's kind of interesting. Let me try first just a piece of the regular one. Potato pancakes are good. And next, let's try a piece with the red palm oil. Oh. Very, very different. People use red palm oil to add flavor, and that definitely added flavor. The flavor that it added, though, is a little unexpected. It's a bit like how it smells. It has like a little bit of like this fruity sort of sort of flavor to it. I mean, it's not sweet. It's um, maybe fruity tasting is not the best description. It's um, like perfumey, like how a citron smells or how mango sometimes can smell or uh, quince it's like it's a little bit sweet smelling and a little perfumey uh, but the flavor itself is not so sweet but it does have a little bit of that perfumey sort of taste as well as a little bit of this earthy vegetal taste and a little bit of like this piney avocado taste 
I would use this in something that has a lot of powerful ingredients, like a stew or something. Put a little bit of, it, of this in there and it's gonna add another layer to it. When you put it in something mild, like a potato dish, it steals the show a little bit too much for me. I think I would prefer vegetable oil for, for this sort of thing. However, making something mild with it has just illustrated to me that this is definitely something that is used to add flavor. It is not just a innocuous, mild oil used to cook things with. It is something to give a flavor, and it definitely does that. Well, that's about it for oil palm. Uh, I know this is a very controversial and complicated fruit, and there's maybe some uh, opinions out there in the audience today, so if you have some comments, please leave it below. Be polite to each other. I think this is something that is definitely worth discussing, and hopefully one day, palm oil won't be such a dirty word. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Wootbot, JMac, and Bill T. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. This is how I manage to keep this channel going, so it is a huge help. And to anyone watching who is interested in supporting the channel and in return getting some really cool rewards, rewards like early access to videos, exclusive content that you can only see if you are a member, and there's even a level where I will send you stuff in the mail, you gotta check it out. So just click the link in the description below to learn more.